Hi, so today I'm going to show you how uh, you can use Azure and our Power Platform together to not only create machine learning models, but also um, automate your data pipelines and training processes with writing very little or no code, really. Um, so the first thing you need to do is actually create a couple resources. So you'll see here, I have already created those. One of them is Forms Recognizer, which is a cognitive service, which is a pre-built machine learning model that allows you to train a model specifically to your forms to uh, extract different entities. And then the other one is storage account where I'm gonna store my data, both for training um, and processing. And then also I can do different triggers from the storage containers within that. I'm not gonna go over how to create those two accounts, but if you click the link below here, um, this will bring you to the docs that will allow you, or that will show you the steps to create both those resources. Um, so first thing we wanna do is go to Power Platform. Um, so I'm going to go to Power Automate, and this is a no-code way to create basically logic execution steps with tons of different plugins and tons of different um, really neat features. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is create a new flow. And I'm going to create a new flow, and you can see that there's different ones I can choose from here. I can have instant, I can have scheduled um, UI, or I can do a business process. So I want to do um, a instant, so I want it to be blank and um, I don't want it scheduled. I just want to be able to kick it off whenever I want. So I'm going to go instant from Blake and then it's going to ask how I want to trigger that flow and give it a name. So I'm going to call this one um, train model PDF or something because what we're going to be doing is taking PDF um, data set and we're going to be extracting the entities out of those. It's um, different invoices so it has things like name, address, um, values, companies, um, that type of stuff and do manually trigger flow and then I'm going to click create. So I'm going to open up Azure Storage Explorer so I can show you a little bit of our data set that we're going to be working with. So you see here that we have the Azure um, Storage Explorer. I can now take a look at my storage account that I've created and I can look at the different blob containers that I have. So I've processed raw and train. I'm actually not going to use refined. So so raw is going to be where I dump my new PDFs that I want to have processed. Processed are going to be ones that I've already completed processing. And then train is going to be the ones that I'm actually going to use to train my model. And you'll notice there's only five documents. That's all I need to train my model. Now, if I were to open one of these up, you can take, we'll take a look at um, what it actually looks like. So it's going to download from my storage account into my local. And so here's an example of the PDF that we are going to be processing. You can see we have name, address, state, we have the company, the company address information, that it's an invoice, invoice number, date, you know, all the typical fields that you would have on an invoice. And we're going to be able to extract this using a machine learning model, training it with only five items all within Power Automate. So let's go back to Power Automate now that we see where our, um, where our files are and what they look like. And the first thing we want to do is we want to grab the um, step that allows us to integrate with the Azure Cognitive Service Form Recognizer. So I'm going to type in Form, form Recognizer. And let's select that here. And the one that we want is to train our model. So all it needs is a source to the um, training data set. The other thing that it needs though is the connection information. So in order to add the connection, so I have, I have added a connection here, but I wanna show you how you do that. You would add a new connection, you'd give it a name, you'd give it the string URL and the account key. And all of that can be found right within the resource itself. So if I were to click into my resource here, um, I can get that information by looking at my access keys and in the overview information of this particular resource. So if I take a quick look at what this resource looks like in Azure, you can see we have a quick start with different information. Um, you can go to the overview and here we can get uh, the endpoint that we would need in order to use this, as well as our keys would be in here. And we would enter that all into our connection information 
here. So this is my endpoint. I can name this whatever I want to call my connection. And the key is in the keys nav under that resource. So the next thing I need now is my training data set. If I go to my resource here, there's actually two different ways I can get this. If you're using the Azure Data Lake, there um, you can't get it by right-clicking and getting um, the URL that way. If you're using a uh, traditional uh, storage account, you actually can just right-click and get a shared access signature or a SAS link. And from there, you can actually use that link to, you would click create, it would create a link with a token and you would put that in. So that's one way to do it if you were using a not um, Azure Data Lake storage account. But since we are, we need to do a little bit different step. We need to go into our resource group again. We need to select our storage account. From here, we are going to go to shared access signature or the SAS link. We're going to select what we want it to have available. And then when you scroll down here, you can actually click generate. And that's going to generate a, a uh, SAS URL for the blob service, which is what we want, but we want it to a specific container, right? Because we have three different containers in it. So if I go back to my flow here, um, or my Power Automate, um, I can then add in after here, train slash everything. So now this is going to be able to connect to my blob storage and it's gonna connect to my train container here and it's gonna select everything in that container for training. Um, and so that's all that we have to do, we can hit save we can then test our Power Automate flow and get an ID for the trained model. So I'll click Save and Test. And so now what that's going to do is it's, I'm going to manually trigger it. It's going to use the Azure Cognitive Service Machine Learning Model, and it's going to grab those five forms out of my train container and train a new model for me. And then I can use that in a new flow in order to um, extract data from new uh, PDFs, all without writing any code. It ran successfully, that's awesome. So now if I take a look here, you can see I get this model ID, and this I'm gonna need because in my next flow, I wanna be able to reference this model. So I am just going to grab a notepad, paste that in, and keep that for later. Now we wanna create the model that is gonna be our data pipeline, which is gonna grab our raw, in, or our raw PDFs, it's going to use the model we just created. It's going to extract the information and display it for us in our flow. From there, you can then take it and you can export it to a data source. You can get the raw JSON and, and process it however you need. I'm going to show you just how to get it to the point where you can get the data out. I'm not going to do the next step of actually putting it into a um, data source. That would be something that you would need to do based on the type of data source that you want to connect to. So I'm going to click Create. Um, the other thing to note about the uh, Microsoft Flow is that there are different templates you can choose from. And so if you're not really sure where to start on something, you can take a look and see if there's already something that has a basic template set for you if you don't know what to do. But let's say I want to do a scheduled flow. I want it to process my PDFs um, every day. Let's say that at, I don't know what time. Let's say so process PDFs. Or let's call this, a, sorry, let's call this data pipeline PDF process. All right. And we'll have it starting today, but we want it to run every day at 10 a.m. And then we're going to click create. So now it'll automatically run. I don't have to do any additional piece. And from there, I can have it run and extract my information. So the first thing I want to do is look for list blobs because I want to be able to list the blobs in the container of the raw folder that I want to actually process. So I can click on Azure Blob Storage. And if I scroll through here, I can see all the different blob storage um, steps that I can add. 
I'm going to add list blobs. And from here, I want to connect it to my blob storage. Now again, I've already added my blob storage, but if you wanted to create a new connection, which you'll need to, it's the same thing as before. You're going to get that shared access account um, key, the storage name, and then you're just going to name the connection whatever you want to name it. Um, and that's going to then authenticate and allow you to connect to that storage. So I've already created one and I've named it my blob storage. So all I have to do is connect it. And now when I select here, I'll be able to see all the folders or containers that are available in that blob storage. Now I want to use raw because this is going to be my container or my files that I need to process. I'll just hit save. And then the next thing I want to do is an apply to each because for each blob in the container, I want to extract the information. So there should be it's under control. And then I want to grab apply to each. And from here, I want to extract the value from the dynamic content. Next thing I want to do is I want to copy the blob because I, what I want to do overall is I want to grab my blob, my raw blobs. I want to copy them over to my new folder, which is the processed. And then in that process, I want to extract all the information and then I'm going to delete it out of the raw folder because it's now been processed. I've already um, extracted the information. So this is our basics of our data pipeline. I have my raw file. I grab each one. I loop through those. I apply my machine learning model that we've just created. I extract the data into a JSON format and then I move it to my processed folder. So now I want to copy the blob. And again, now when I click on copy blob, I can see that there is path. So I want the source URL is actually the path to the file or folder. And then from here, I want it to move to the process folder. And I'm gonna choose yes overwrite because I've been playing around with this and I'm gonna have some duplicates. So if I don't choose overwrite right now, it's not actually gonna overwrite, overwrite an existing file with the same name, which will cause issues. In your case, you may not want to overwrite existing files. You may wanna know there's a naming issue and you could put no, and then it would error out on that particular file and not process it and then move to the next one. For this demo and for what I'm doing, I want it to just overwrite it. So the next thing I wanna do is get the content of the blob. So I wanna actually get the um, streamed data from the file in order to process it. So I'm gonna again go to blob um, functions here. I want to get blob content. And from there, I'm gonna again choose the path. So this is the path to the blob that I'm currently processing in my apply to each, um, my apply to each loop. So now we're ready to get that content and apply the machine learning model to it. So the next thing I'm going to do is look for the form recognizer again. And in here, I'm going to use the analyze form. So it's gonna ask for the model ID, and as you remember, we have that right here. The document is going to be the file content that we got from this step here. Um, so there's already gonna be keys that it's gonna have learned by training it for that model, so we don't need to give it additional keys. If there was an additional key you wanted it to look for, you could add that here. The content type is the application PDF. And then the last step we want to do in our folder or in our process here is actually delete the blob because we want to delete the blob from the raw folder since we have already processed it. So if I look here, there is delete blob. And again, I want that to be the path that we are working with, which again is that existing blob. So there we go. Now I'm going to hit save. So we have now created our data pipeline. It's going to go through, it's going to extract that information, and then it's going to delete the blob. Now, what you would want to do if you're going to connect to a data source is after it extracts the blob here, you would want to add an action that would maybe, um, maybe you will have a SQL, um, you want to execute a query to add that data to 
a, a database or maybe um, you have, you know, I think you can just actually do data source and see the different, like there's so many different data sources and operations. Um, you can create a CSV, you can, yeah. So there's lots of different ways that you can do once you have the data. We just wanna focus on getting the, how we get the data now. So I'm gonna hit save and then I'm gonna test it. I'm gonna save and test. Now I'm gonna run this flow. And so what you'll be able to see now is it'll go through, it's gonna list the blobs, and now each one, it's gonna loop through all the blobs in this container for the raw. And what's gonna happen once this is done is these are all gonna be gone because it's gonna move it to the process and it's gonna delete it out after it processes each one. We can see now that it's completed running. It took 42 seconds to run. And if we take a look at our analyze form, um, we can now see the pages. So the pages are the result from the machine learning model. We can see that it successfully went through. If we go to this and we refresh, we will see that there's no longer any data in our raw folder since it's all been processed. Let me bring this into VS Code and make our life a little easier for looking through the result here. So here's our result from the machine learning model. We can see that we have the name, we get a bounding box for where it found it. We get the value here. So these are the key value pairs. Um, so we have another key, which is address. And if we scroll down, we can see the address. Um, we can see the city, which is Langley. We can see the company. We can see um, the company address, which is here. So you see, we're able to extract all of this data from a PDF without writing any code. We were able to use a machine learning model that was built with Azure by just providing data of existing um, PDFs in order to create that model. And you can see we have all this information that we can now parse and put into a database, make a data source, export to a CSV, um, whatever you need to do with the data there. You can see the invoice number, we have the order date, we have the email. Now we're getting the, the information for the actual invoice amount, the total discount, tax rate. So all of that information that we saw in the PDF is right here for us. So now you can see how you can quite quickly use Azure Machine Learning Cognitive Services pre-built models, customize that model to your data set, and then use Power Automate to create your data pipeline without writing any code, which is just kind of crazy if you think about it. Um, and then from there, you can extract that information and put it in your data source. And there you go. That's it.